Welcome everyone. Another great evening here in Banshell Park. A great evening to be here in the city of Ames, is it not? As expected, looking around here, I see we have a fantastic turnout here in Banshell Park this evening. And why not? Tonight, one of the most special concerts we bring you each and every year. Iowa's own world-renowned vocalist, educator, and philanthropist, Simon Estes, is here with us this evening. I'm John Burnett Larkins, very pleased, as always, to be here with you on this stage. And, of course, is also Ames City Council Night. Let's have a round of applause for Mayor Campbell and the City Council for their fantastic support of the Ames Municipal Band. Hopefully you have gotten your uh, complimentary cookie and uh, Ames water from the council members and other city representatives who are here this evening. Do we, do we have cookies and water left? Looks like, yep, looks like we do right over there. If you haven't gotten any yet, make sure you head over there. And for those of you who got here really, really early, followed our advice, you got to enjoy a, an extended performance of our pre-concert entertainment, the Boone Big Band. Let's hear it for them this evening, yes. And let's hear it for these people sitting right here on stage. They are the stars of the show every week right here. Ladies and gentlemen, the members of your Ames Municipal Band. And I'm the director of the Ames Municipal Band, Dr. Michael Galimo. And we'll be making some more introductions in just a few minutes. But right now, we would like to get tonight's very special concert officially underway. We ask that you please rise, please face the flag, remove your hats. As always, veterans and current service members, you may perform a service salute at your discretion. And join the Ames Municipal Band for our national anthem. <laughs> Thank you once again for joining us here on this very special evening. And as mentioned just a few minutes ago, it is Ames City Council Night. Council has mentioned an organization that we owe a very big thank you to for their continued support of the Ames Municipal Band year after year and for giving all this, this wonderful home for all of us here for the Ames Municipal Band, Banshell Park, and the Durham Banshell. And last but not least, for the uh, complimentary cookies and uh, wonderful Ames water being served here this evening. And I uh, want to mention that uh, as she is uh, preparing to wrap up her tenure as the Mayor of Ames, Mayor Ann Campbell has been a fantastic supporter of the Ames Municipal Band. Let's hear it for Mayor Campbell one more time. <laughs> now, Mayor Campbell not able to be with us here tonight, but right now I would like to uh, introduce to you the Mayor Pro Tem of Ames, Peter Orasm. Well, thank you so much for coming out. Uh, Mayor Campbell is traveling, and so she asked me to step in for her. We have the rest of the city council here, if I can introduce them, if you guys would like to come out. Uh, Gloria Betcher, Bronwyn Beatty-Hanson, Tim Garden, 
Chris Nelson and Amber Corrieri uh, couldn't make it, but this is your AIM City Council, so let's give them a big round of applause. And we'd like to thank Susan Guiazd and all the city staff who were helping with all the water uh, and the cookies. Uh, and some of these guys were helping out as well, I know. And various family and relatives that were brought into the play there. That was very nice of them. Uh, we want you to remember that we're going to have a brand new water treatment plant. It's going online on August 26th. There'll be a grand opening. So. Uh, this is the last year that we're hauling water from across the street here. Now we'll have to haul it in for a couple miles, so thank God I'm getting off council. <laughs> so this is the 17th year that we've been able to welcome our special guest to join us uh, on City Council Night here on the Amy Municipal Band stage. And we'd like to welcome the F. Wendell Miller Distinguished Artist in Residence, Simon Estes. We know that our governor is, 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 is now ambassador to China. Simon is our ambassador to the whole world. He, owns, he has 26 honorary doctorates and literally travels the world and represents Iowa so well. So we thank you very much for your second home here at the, at the Ames Band Shell. And to commemorate that, we're giving you coffee mugs with the Ames Band Shell on them. Uh, and some coffee from the Ames Historical Society. You too can own one of these just like Simon Estes if you go <laughs> to the Ames Historical Society. So thank you, Bronwyn. We're going to uh, save those for you on the back and, and welcome uh, here. The concert is about to start. Thank you. On the first of a few numbers, he'll be uh, performing with us on this evening. Simon Estes, so glad to have him here with us this evening. Well, one of the best loved and most recognizable comic operas, Rossini's The Barber of Seville. Interestingly, its premiere in Rome was a disaster. Many in the audience were supporters of the composer Giovanni Paisello, who had previously composed The Barber of Seville. And Rossini's version, a newer, different version, and... Um, Fizello considered it to be an affront. Many people in the audience hissed and jeered throughout the performance. There were several accidents that occurred, but within a matter of days, Rossini's version was being touted as a great success. And it debuted in England in 1818 and in America 
one year after that. The overture from the Barber of Seville, a rollicking number, it has always been strongly connected to comedy, including when it was a subject of a classic Bugs Bunny cartoon. You've all seen that, right? Yeah, it's a great one. Also used in the Beatles film Help, and also used in an episode of Seinfeld, just to name a few. We now invite you to enjoy the high spirits of the overture to the Barber of Seville. <laughs>
Casey Mole, the Barber of Seville. The overture from Nonetheless. Want to say hello to the uh, Friendship Force of Central Iowa, the folks in the blue shirts. They are here this evening. We are uh, happy to have them in the audience tonight. We want to say thank you, as always, to our media partners, News Talk 1430 KASI. We are live on KASI right now. And uh, you can always, of course, enjoy the uh, Municipal Band concerts again Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock, News Talk 1430. Ames Channel 12 featuring the Ames Municipal Band concerts on TV and online with the City of Ames YouTube channel. Check it out. You can watch them as many times as you want. Pick them up anywhere in the concert that you want. Really a, a great thing. And uh, make sure to check the TV schedule as well on the City of Ames website. Well, when you are considered a master at turning lighthearted music for orchestra, well, why wouldn't you come up with a number that involves the actual rubbing together of pieces of sandpaper. That's exactly what you get with Leroy Anderson's aptly named Sandpaper Ballet. Now, the Sandpaper Ballet is actually not a ballet at all. It's an homage by Anderson to the famous soft shoe style of dance made famous during America's vaudeville days. And we like to make sure and take full advantage of the uh, full sandpaper aspect of the sandpaper ballet tonight. So we have members our, of our percussion section We're going to bring front and center to show off their sandpaper expertise. They've been staying up late at night all week long trying to get the, that down to perfection. Let's uh, bring them out right now. Please say hello to our uh, sandpaper meisters, as it were. They are members of the Ames Municipal Band percussion section. Please say hello to Tasha Becker. Tania Fabre, Adam Kalal, and Jacob Lynch. If you happen to have a piece of sandpaper in your pocket, well, you know, pull it out and join us. And, you, know, if, uh, you know, I carry one. I don't know about you. Have some fun now with Leroy Anderson's Sandpaper Ballet. <laughs> Thank you. 
And the entire band, great work on the Sandpaper Ballet. Hey, we joke, but uh, you know what? That, that did definitely take some practice and take some rehearsals to get that just right. You never knew there was such an art to playing sandpaper blocks, did you? Those are brand new sandpaper blocks, too, I am told, that were purchased just for all of you here tonight. So that could just be letter perfect. You know what the dog said when he sat on the sandpaper? Rough. All right. We may have just marked the anniversary of the D-Day invasion in World War II, but we are upon another significant anniversary involving American troops in the war, and that is the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Midway. That anniversary is this week. At this time, we would like any veterans, any current service members, and do we, do we have any World War II veterans in the audience this evening, by chance? Right over there. I believe that's George Burnett. All of you, please stand, if, if you are able, please. Veterans, World War II veterans especially, and current service members, let's have a round of applause for these people, please. Thank you for your service. We all owe you so very much. Thank you. How many of you remember the series Victory at Sea, the documentary series about America's seafaring warriors in World War II? Yeah, that was on NBC TV originally in 1952. 1953 was then condensed into a film released in 1954. Uh, though that was before my time, I do remember uh, growing up watching it on television, watching the uh, black and white episodes of Victory at Sea and enjoying it very much. And I remember the music from it. it was absolutely fantastic. It was done by the NBC Orchestra, and uh, Richard Rogers was uh, the principal composer of that. Yeah, that Richard Rogers of Rogers and Hammerstein, in case you didn't know that. And on the heels of the Battle of Midway came the Battle of Guadalcanal, which was the inspiration for one of Victory at Sea's best-loved numbers. And tonight, in honor of the U.S. Navy in Victory at Sea and the Battle of Guadalcanal, the anniversary of that, is coming up soon. We bring you the Guadalcanal March. <laughs> Thank you. 
has mentioned already this evening, but it can't be mentioned too many times. Simon Estes, an international ambassador for the state of Iowa, and a prime example of using blessings of talent to help and inspire people in many different ways. Simon Estes first sang at the age of eight in his church in Centerville, Iowa, and after receiving a scholarship to the Juilliard School, he made his opera debut in 1965. He received a bronze medal in Moscow's Tchaikovsky competition in 1966, and after that quickly went on to become an opera performance legend, appearing with a total of 84 major international opera companies and 115 different orchestras. He has played King Philip in Don Carlo, Escamillo in Carmen, Porgy in Porgy and Bess, and has held a title role in Wagner's The Flying Dutchman, just to name a few of the many, many roles he has held. But Simon Estes has, of course, come to be known equally well for his philanthropy and charity work through his Simon Estes Foundation. And that includes the Iowa County's Scholarship Program, which awards scholarships to graduating high school seniors. The Young Artist Performance Program, which provides performance experience to emerging young artists interested in pursuing a career in the performing arts and is promoted through his Roots and Wings Program. And the Malaria Project, which supports efforts in partnership with the United Nations Foundation and various church organizations to eliminate malaria in Africa. And uh, Simon tells me by the end of this month, he will have raised uh, five hundred thousand dollars for the Malaria Project and the United Nations Foundation. He is part of the music faculty at Iowa State University where he is the Wendell F. Miller Distinguished Artist in Residence, a visiting professor of music at Des Moines Area Community College in Ankeny. We are always delighted to have him give of his time and he is a very busy individual. Matter of fact, on the 29th of this month he will be performing at Carnegie Hall. To join the Ames Municipal Band, please welcome back to the stage here this evening, the one and only Simon Estes. Simon will now bring us a song made famous by the woman known as the Queen of Gospel, Mahalia Jackson. Simon Estes, our very special guest this evening with A City Called Heaven. Oh, no. 
As mentioned in his introduction, Simon has played the role of Escamillo in Carmen. And as such, he was able to perform one of the best loved arias from that opera. And he is set to share it with us here this evening. Simon Estes with the Toreador song. Must know 
something, but he don't say nothing. He just keeps rolling. He keeps on rolling along. He don't plant taters, and he don't plant cotton. And them that plants him is soon forgotten. But old man River, he just keeps rolling along. You and me, we sweat and strain. Body all aching and wrecked with pain. Hope that march and lift that veil. Get a little drunk and you'll land in jail. I get so weary and sick of trying. Lord, I'm tired of living and scared. Incomparable Simon Estes, ladies and gentlemen. You might recall last summer. We brought you a couple of debut numbers by an up-and-coming U.S. composer named Rosano Galante. Galante originally from Buffalo, New York. The clock is ticking. We'll do Galante another night. Next week, next week, Doc says. All right, come back and you'll hear that one. We'll try it again. 2013 saw one of the biggest blockbusters in animated movies make its debut when Walt Disney Animation rolled out Frozen. Grab the kids over from the playground. Get them over here. They're going to want to hear this one. Inspired by the Hans Christian Andersen tale of the Snow Queen, it, of course, tells the story of the princess who sets out on a journey with the rugged Iceman to find her estranged sister whose powers have trapped the kingdom in perpetual winter. It's the highest grossing animated film of all time. And tonight we salute the music from Frozen. The band brings you Frozen Heart. Do you want to build a snowman? For the first time in forever. And of course, let it go. This is Symphonic Highlights from Frozen.
Next week, our concert will include the uh, ISU men's vocal group, Shy of a Dozen, doing our pre-concert entertainment. ISU vocal music major, Maddie Olsom, will uh, be our guest vocal soloist. We'll also have the uh, annual Flag Day ceremony prior to the concert with the Ames Elks Lodge and Boy Scout Troop 196. Shy of a Dozen will get underway at 7. Concert will start at 8. A new one now for the band here tonight, ready to roll out, one you are sure to love. It is called Curtain Call. It's a salute to all the great finales, encores, and reprises written for the stage. 
It was originally written for the Dallas Brass for five brass players and one percussionist, but this arrangement was adapted for a full band. It's a flashy, energetic number, a very busy one involving each and every section of the band plenty. Enjoy it. This is Curtain Call. <laughs> Every ending known to a uh, man in music was there at the end of that. I love that. Our closer tonight, a march with quite a history. E.E. E. Bagley composed National Emblem in 1902 while on a train tour with his family band. Now, the story goes he got frustrated trying to write the ending for it and ended up tossing it into the trash. Unbeknownst to him, some members of his band pulled it out of the trash. They came up with an ending for it, and at the next concert, just before they started, they surprised him and said, we finished this for you and we're going to play it tonight. And the rest, as they say, is history. Went on to become his most popular march. John Philip Sousa was asked once what he thought were the three best street marches. He picked two of his own and national emblem. High praise indeed. Bagley incorporated the first 12 notes of the Star Spangled Banner in the first strain of this march. Have you ever noticed that when you've heard it? If not, Listen carefully, it'll jump right out at you. Considered one of the world's foremost marches, our closer tonight, Bagley's National Emblem. <laughs>
under the direction of Dr. Michael Galimo, ladies and gentlemen, your Ames Municipal Band. That'll do it for tonight. As always, thank you so much for joining us here in Banshell Park. If this was your first time out this season, we hope you'll continue to come back with us. We look forward to seeing you back here next week. I'm John Burnett Larkin. So on behalf of all the members of the Ames Municipal Band, good night, everybody.